Hey, how's it going guys and welcome back to the channel. Today I'd like to share with you all of the mods and upgrades that I have made so far on my Honda CRF 300 l that might be useful to you. Let's get started. Okay, so before I tell you about the upgrades and mods I have made, let me just be clear here that what I'm showing to you is really from motorcyclist to motorcyclist. If you decide to buy any of these products, I will try to leave the link here in the description just for your convenience, but I get no money out of that. So if you buy, if you don't buy, that's just my experience after having put all of these mods and upgrades to a real test. So I really took a, a longer trip with these items and then I'm sharing with you what has worked and what hasn't worked. So without further ado, the first upgrade and I'm mentioning here is the first because I think it's very important, especially if you think about going off-road uh, off with your motorcycle, these are the handguards. So what I have here are the handguards from Barkbusters. That's not the first, first motorcycle that I have with Barkbusters. I used already on my CB500X and I just have to say I like their products. I mean, they, they are they're solid. They really do the job of protecting your levers in case of a crash. There are different ones in the market. I don't know if they're good, if they're not good, but all I can say is that I'm happy with the Bark Busters. I have dropped the motorcycle at least five times so far and my levers are still the original and intact. So that's a pretty good one. Continuing here, let me show to you another one. And this is the foam that goes over the original grips. Now, I do not like this product. They do the job that Malam just explained to you why I don't like this particular one. They do the job perfectly in terms of reducing, I would say even they remove completely vibrations. So they do their job. So that's very nice. What I don't like personally, but that's only my choice, since they go over the original grips, they make the diameter where you wrap your hand over larger. So the, you know, it's not as tight. You have to hold a little bit bigger in here. And I just don't like that. It's just about the feeling so my preference, and I know I'm going to do that, I'm going to install steel foam grips, but they will replace the original grips. So the diameter stays the same. Now the next one, unfortunately, you cannot buy, but still counts as a mod. I was part of the very few or very many, I'm not sure. Actually, I think there are quite a few people complain about this, that they say that the brake line, right? So the brake line, it's rooted in a way on the CRF 300L, which is smack on blocking your view to the speedometer. I would say, well, why do you care? Well, I definitely care. Why, where I live, we have a lot of speed cameras and I'm not a crazy motorcyclist. I'm not going you know, over the speed limit by, by a drastic margin here. But whenever I see that there is a speed camera ahead, I do like to look at my speed to make sure that I don't get a fine. And every time that I have to do that with the original configuration, it was just there blocking the, the numbers spot on. So I just had to lower my head a little bit or go over to see my speed. And I just, it was just bothering me too much. So I have done a self-adaptation here. It's extremely simple, but it does the job. So here you can see there is this uh, plastic bracket in here, which is connected to an aluminum plate, which I bent. So it reached towards the front of the motorcycle and it just pushes, right? This half moon just pushes the brake line a bit towards the front of the motorcycle. It's extremely simple. It's connected with, uh, with the two screws at the top. And then if you go down, this here is the original routing of the brake line. And there is fixated by this screw. So this plate just connects to the same screw. It's about a one millimeter or two millimeter uh, plate. And then I just bent and that's what you get. So now my brake line is not blocking my view. Now let's continue here on this side of the motorcycle. You see that there is a cable in here. This is a USB cable that connects all the way to the back on the battery of my motorcycle. And then I just route it here inside and it ends in here. And it's right now connected inside. It ends inside of my handlebar bag. Of course, when I don't have the handlebar bag, uh, then I just fix it with a Velcro strap in here. But that's a USB for charging my GPS device or phone and so on. The next one, and I really enjoy this product. I have a dedicated video talking only about the luggage system that I put together for the CRF 300L. It is the side luggage support from Adventure Spec. It works together with the rear rack. So that's another upgrade. You have the rear rack and the side luggage support. They are both from Adventure Spec. They both work together. So it is, uh, it's plug and play. I have videos here on the channel showing how to install both parts. I do have one complaint about the side luggage support and is only on the right side. 
This section here, it's attached to the frame of the motorcycle. And maybe you can see there on the video, but it sticks out, right? So my, my leg, which is right here, the back of my calf hits on this part. Th th this is not good at all. That's not good at all. Uh, and I get what happened here. This bracket, it's shaped like this, like a U, and you have two brackets and they go one on each side and they are exactly the same dimension. On the left side, it's perfect because this side luggage support sits flush against the motorcycle. So there's no way for my, the back of my calf to hit it. But since it's the same size bracket, on the right side, it just sticks out. So I'm going to fix this by myself. I'm 100% sure going to fabricate one and I'm going to share here on the channel. I'm going to fabricate one which is a little bit shorter so it does not stick out because it was bothering me a lot during the trip and I was 20 days on the road and it was even marking at the back of my calf so it was kind of hurting and I couldn't use my ankle as a, as a suspension here like really moving my ankle I couldn't fully use that because of this. Now we're talking about protection the next one is the bash plate also from Adventure Spec I really like it because it's light and it's simple I mean it is it is as simple as that it, as it can get. I mean, what, what else do you want to overcomplicate on, on bash plates? And unfortunately, some companies really overcomplicate. And I think they just went directly to the point. It protects here the, the water pump on the, on the right side. And it's quite minimalist. It does the job. I hit it a few times while traveling and it just does the job. So I do like this product and I would buy it again. Let's talk about tires. So I have changed the tires because I knew I was going to take a more aggressive off-road. So here in the front, I have the Pirelli MT16. And in the rear, I have the Dunlop D606. Now, they were great tires. I, I definitely like them. And only on my front tire, I have upgraded the tube to heavy duty tube. So they're four millimeters uh, thick. I haven't done it in the back. It's more in the front uh, that I was more concerned about getting a pinch or getting a flat tire there's a big one and hopefully you can see here on the inside i have a fully adjustable suspension rear shock uh, so let's talk a little bit about this so i don't want to beat a dead horse in here everybody's going to tell you that the rear suspension of their crf 300l is very soft yes this is correct it is soft do you need to change it straight away absolutely not i mean go enjoy yourself because that's a costly upgrade. The only reason why I have done it is because I saw someone selling a used one, so I didn't buy brand new, and it had the perfect settings for me. So when you're buying a fully adjustable suspension, you're usually gonna get questions about what is your weight and what is your weight with the, with the gear, and how typically do you ride? So how much luggage are you carrying? So based on that, on the weight, the total weight of uh, when you're ready to ride, the manufacturer is going to then specify the appropriate spring for you. So this guy was selling a used one with the sprit appropriate for my weight. And not only that, this suspension also lowers the motorcycle by 30 millimeters. And that's exactly, I, I wanted that. I wanted that because I'm not really a tall guy. I'm only one meter 75. I'll have it in feet here on the, on the screen. So I'm only 175 and it's sold as a kit. Uh, because when you lower the back of the motorcycle, you should proportionally do the required here on the front suspension. So this kit came with upgraded uh, springs for the front fork. Only one, of course, is only one in this case. Already lowered with the necessary parts to lower. Lowered rear shock, fully adjustable, uh, which is fantastic. And that's what I have it in here. So I also have it here on the channel, the step-by-step -step how to exchange, how to change the, the rear shock. And it was a worth upgrade. I paid 600 euro used and I installed by myself. It is a costly upgrade. There are cheaper options that are not fully adjustable, but I couldn't just pass on uh, on this deal. I mean, it was really a good catch. So that's why I upgraded. If it wasn't for that, I would leave this for later because I mean, we're talking here upwards of a thousand dollars, a thousand euro if I wanted this setup. Now, there are cheaper options that are not fully adjustable that you can just get springs that are appropriate for your weight. At the right time, yes, you, if you have the option, you know you're gonna stick with the CRF 300L and you like this motorcycle as a package, is it worth to upgrade? Yes, it is. Is it rideable with the original one? Yes, it is rideable. Uh, I mean, if you're a racer, that's a different game in here. If you're very aggressive, it's a different game. But for most people, go and have a good time with the motorcycle and do it when it's the right time or if you have a good deal. If you notice in here where my finger is now, there is a metal plate in here. So here you can see, 
where it's falling, this plate in here, you see? And it goes all the way here to the back. And here's the other plate that comes from the bottom and they connect. And they allow me to you know, shift gears, no problem. Actually, even when I put it down, you can see it more, look there. And this here is not original with the bash plate. I used the bash plate to give me the support. So it's connected to the bash plate, welded here and here, and then it follows the contour. So my idea is that if this here gets pushed, I have this plate which holds, it creates a support for the gear shifter. Now, if you're still watching this video and you're a hands-on guy and you're fabricating things by yourself, I would be very curious to know what is your opinion as well about this modification. So let's talk a little bit because it can really, it has the potential to end your, your motorcycle trip. The thing is that this shaft starts on the opposite side. That's where the shift gear is connected. And this shaft goes through the engine. So it ends up on this side. And at the very, on the opposite side, so on one side you have the shift gear. And on the opposite side, you have a mechanism, like two teeth, that once you kick down to go down the gears, it also, it what's connects is what makes the, the gear change inside the engine. And when you kick up, it also, there is a tooth that kicks up as well. So this mechanism is considered a weak point on the Honda CRF 300L. And why is that? Because when you tip over the motorcycle, if you let it fall on the left side, there is the potential and there are videos on YouTube. You can find that people showing you how to fix it and people just sharing their experience that this was a problem for them is that if this shaft gets pushed inside the engine, right? Because you just dropped the motorcycle. So now you can push the shaft towards the opposite side. You damage this teeth, these two teeth, this, this mechanism. I don't know what's the proper word in English here. And then you are unable to shift gears. So if you drop the motorcycle on third gear, you're going to be stuck in third gear if you dropped on second and second and so on. Or to be more precise, usually what happens is that only one of these teeth is going to get damaged. So if it is the teeth which controls the downward shifting, then you cannot shift downwards. And if it is the opposite, then you cannot shift up. Now, you can imagine that this can end your... It's not going to end your trip, but depends on, on where you are, you might be stuck. I mean, if you drop the motorcycle in a rough terrain, and a mountain road on fifth gear, that is going to be very hard for you to get yourself out of there. Uh, and in order to fix it, it is not necessarily complicated, but it's very hard to do it on the trail because you need to get the engine oil out and you need to get the engine coolant out. So how many of us are prepared to do such type of a job while on the trail? And that's assuming that you can fix, that you can just bend this teeth, this mechanism, you have to bend it right to its place. So it's quite tricky uh, and it can be a silly fall. I mean, there's a guy from Portugal. I think his, uh, the, the name of his channel is Of Course Off Road. He's a guy from Portugal and he had a silly fall. I mean, it doesn't have to be serious. It's just bad luck and this happens to you. So the modification I have done in there is try to give me a better chance of this shaft not getting pushed inside the engine. So make out of that whatever you want. Again, this is a self-made thing. There is no guarantee that that's going to work and it's not going to influence something else. But if I put together an idea, I think that this is quite solid, that at least it gives some kind of a, a better chance of this uh, damage not happening. So that's it. These are pretty much all of the upgrades that I have done. I am not uh, finished. There are a few still. There are still a few things that I want to change. So if you are not yet subscribed to the channel, maybe consider because I'm going to share everything here on the channel. Hope you enjoyed, and if you did, give it a like. And I see you on the next video. Bye bye.